Prime Minister Narendra Modi has kicked off the campaign for the 2024 Lok Sabha elections by launching a development project worth over 19,100 crore rupees at a rally in Bulanshir in Western UP. The party has already planned around two month old long uh, month long events that focus on the Ram Temple to mobilize the party cadre and supporters for the Lok Sabha polls. PM Modi has also inaugurated multiple projects in Bulanshir and Meerut divisions, which include a medical college, a four-lane highway, an integrated township in Greater Noida and other such projects as well. With all these developments coming in and considering all that the BJP government has done in the past nine years, is it safe to say that India is on the path to progress is the big question. Vinita Hariyar, BJP spokesperson, is joining us live. We also have Abhimanyu Tyagi, Congress spokesperson, live with us. Himanshu Bhatt, senior journalist, is live with us. Joy Tabasu, editor of the Sunday Guardian, also uh, joins us live. Uh, let me uh, begin with you first, Himanshu Bhatt, the PM uh, blowing the pole bugle today, addressing a rally in Bulanshir, Uttar Pradesh, also inaugurating several development projects. Uh, how crucial do you believe today's uh, event, today's uh, public meeting's focus was? Well, it is quite important. It's probably, you know, the beginning of BJP's pole campaign for 2024. <coughs> and not he's not diverting from the fact what he said on 22nd of uh, this month in Ayodhya at Ram Mandir. He very clearly said, Ram hai to Rashtra hai, Dev hai to Desh hai. It's very clear. See, they are working on two plans. One is that of Asta, that is faith, and other one that is of development. Nine, ten years, this government has been doing the work which we had not seen in the free, free India, which is moving towards Bharat. See, I'm using both the names because this is basically the transformation of India into Bharat and which will be coupled with development all around the place. And Western UP this time is chosen in the Hindi heartland because of a few reasons which I think are important. If you see 2019 results, you will understand that, you know, out of total 14 or 15 seats there in Lok Sabha, the BJP had managed to win, win only eight. That's a different thing. All seven constituencies near Bulanshir, you know, that district, which was, you know, Kalyan Singh's, I think, uh, probably the Kalyan Singh's, yeah, right, that's Kalyan Singh's bastion, were won by BJP. But when we are talking of Lok Sabha polls, this region becomes important in Uttar Pradesh. Because there, if you see the total tally, the maximum number of seats which the opposition had won was from Uttar Pradesh. <laughs> Another thing that is important is, this is the region which is going to be peppered by everyone. Rajiv Gandhi, uh, Rahul Gandhi's uh, Yatra is also going to go there. Then uh, Samajwadi Party's rally is also going to go there. So everybody wants, everybody is concentrating on Western UP. Then, who, what will attract the voters this time? Now, the voter, once the voter has awakened, what he wants is development. Unless you give him the good lifestyle, then what he is already living with, he's not going to, he's not going to vote for you. That's very, very clear. And that's why I see Western UP as a sound beginning point for a party like BJP to start that campaign. And this is virtually the start of the campaign because what I foresee is if April 16th is going to be the election day, the first phase, then it will go up to May 15th and by May 15th, 20th, we'll get the results. So there's no time left to waste. And mind you, BJP, apart from the weak points in Hindi heartland, is going to concentrate so much on South this time. In the states like Tamil Nadu, Kerala, there are going to be surprises. What we see on the ground, the swell that we see on the ground, and you know, the position of opposition. So, because you know, when you cannot, when you cannot dispute a fact that you know the country has been rejuvenated, India is moving towards a Bharat. And recently, yesterday or day before yesterday, our stock exchange overtook Hong Kong stock exchange. We are we are the fourth largest. And in Davos, you know, if I remember the fact correctly, in Davos, someone asked Hardeep Singh Puri, our minister. That what, India will be a 5 trillion economy by 27, 28? Hardeep Singh Puri, you know, was very clear. He said, why you are waiting till 2027, 2028? It will be in 2024, 2025. 
the indications are that and for that this development development in all fronts which would lead to a lot of employment and lot of uplifting of the poorer sections of the people is going to play a vital role and that's why you know when bjp starts from western up there is a very regular very very clear indicator there uday all right let me uh, take that across to uh, uh, vinita hariharan as well vinita uh, a uh, clearly f- focus on uh, the ram mandir today a uh, focus also of course uh, more importantly on development today on vikas projects of course a plethora of them unveiled by the pm is this going to be uh, are these going to be the buzzwords the focus areas on as uh, you know the campaign begins uh, you know to heat up in the run up to lok sabha polls which will be happening later this year No, absolutely. Our, uh, you know, our plank has always been development and because and because alone. So right from 2014, we have seen how the story has unfolded and how our development narrative had begun in 2014. Right from the basic, basic facilities of giving toilets to everybody through the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan and then the Pradhan Mantri Awas and you know Dujwala and all of them have become household names now. These programs because most of rural India and urban India has have been benefited by this. We have seen the figures going around. Nine crore, uh, you know, eleven uh, uh, crore and odd toilets, and nine crore Ujjwala connections. Then the electricity, electrification of rural India, hundred percent electrification. All of these are outcomes which have been praised globally, you know, in, even by the United Nations. So there's no undoing of that in any in in any uh, you know front. So it's only going to be more and more about that. So now we're going to cater to aspirational India. It was this till now. It was just the basic needs, the basic amenities, because even that was not fulfilled the last so many years. that the other governments have ruled uh, you know the congress and the upa and so on and so forth have ruled india for so many years before 2014 but it's after 2014 that the actual development narrative had actually begun and so that's going to be our plan that's that has been a strong hold all the time and uh, so it's been that story and even in even in ayodhya the celebration was the civilizational pride you know the pride that how what uh, ram rajya was all about that's what we're trying to recreate now so you know it, it may sound uh, you know archaic archaic or it may sound cliche but that's what the narrative is it's about recreating a ram rajya in india and that's what uh, you know modi ji and the modi ji's leadership we we proven it again and again how india is going from strength to strength we have grown from strength to strength and now we have from the fragile five to the top five economies you know the fastest growing economy of the world so that's a huge uh, position to uh, take up and then the g20 presidency and so many uh, you know uh, feathers on our cap so i think it's a proud moment for india it's not just that we the spokesperson are talking it's the ordinary citizens we've heard people uh, from you know when we go on our outreach program we've heard people from ordinary homes say that they're so proud to be uh, living in india today because this is a proud moment for india and this is the one of the golden periods of india's uh, history i would say independent india's history this is under uh, the bjp regime so uh, very well uh, you know uh, very rightly so he has launched his campaign from ayodhya the bugle call has been t- taken from ayodhya a very auspicious moment so i think we have to take it that way and because is going to be our agenda going forward till the lok sabha and even in the campaign we're going to be only talking about what kind of vikas we've done in our country over the last 10 years right also you know the the fact uh, very clearly is uh, uh, abhimanyu tyagi that uh, you know this is going to be a poll pitch that the bjp is going to carry on now are the indications uh, through the lok sabha elections many believe that today the poll bugle was blown how do you view the focus of uh, you know the pm today in bulandshahar uttar pradesh and uh, you know the battle for 2024 now that lies ahead for your party as well उदय जी आपको और पैनल मौजूद सभी लोगों को नमस्कार जय हिंद वंदे मातरम उदय जी मोदी इज कमिंग टू वेस्टर्न उत्तर प्रदेश एंड अर्लियर ही वॉज केम हियर एट द टाइम ऑफ यूपी असेंबली इलेक्शन बट हियर इन उत्तर प्रदेश सुगर केन फार्मर पेंडिंग ड्यूज विच इज नियरली अराउंड सिक्स थाउजेंड करोड़ ड्यूज आर पेंडिंग अगेंस्ट स्टेट गवर्नमेंट एंड अगेंस्ट सुगर केन मिल्स एंड अनदर टॉपिक इज स्ट्रे एनिमल्स स्ट्रे एनिमल्स आर डिस्ट्रॉइंग क्रॉप ऑफ फार्मर्स and state government doesn't have any bjp government doesn't have any plan regarding the stray animals agnivir scheme is destroying the future of youth here youths are especially of western uttar pradesh especially the youth of 
Bulanshar also. They are in frustration because their future are in the hand of the Agnivir scheme and they doesn't have any permanent future job. And government and youth are also demanding where is their 2 crore job per year, where is 35 litre pet rupees petrol, where is 450 cylinder. Everyone is asking the government and also there are some factors regarding that in Western Uttar Pradesh like Merit, Merit has Kutir Udyog, the cottage industry of Caesar, <laughs> toys, handloom, Saranpur has furniture industry, Bareilly has Petal industry and likewise every district has some cottage industry at which they are shutting down and also MSME industry is facing problem. So today you doesn't have any employment, they doesn't have any future. Also, education sector is collapsing down. Farmers, they are saying that farmers income is doubled, but debts are increasing day by day. And, and youth is facing the extremely, the most challenging time of era. Women doesn't feel secure against the common man. Okay, let me uh, get a quick response from Vinita Ariyaran to you. Vinita, uh, please respond. No, I uh, really don't understand what he was talking about because uh, we have seen how Vikas has been a 360 degree uh, kind of a movement under Modi's uh, Modi's leadership. And uh, the, the points that he rose, I mean, he raised was like very, very, you know, micro level points, which is taken care of by the local authorities. And uh, as far as MSMEs, so uh, we have seen how much MSMEs have been given a thrust in this regime. And never before has MSMEs got such a huge uh, focus under uh, you know and under any government, so to speak. It is only under Modi ji's uh, leadership that we have had. We have seen the MSMEs grow so much, and we've, we've had a plethora of efforts done for the MSMEs, the digitalization of uh, you know the, getting the MSMEs access to digital platforms, their entire, you know, improving the competitiveness. I, I myself have been part of many of these uh, programs which we have formulated and which we have uh, kind of, we, we have reached out to so many more MSMEs today and the Udhyamada registrations and all of that, we have, you know, made it so user-friendly for the MSMEs and all the subsidies going directly to the MSMEs. Most of them are central sector schemes that have, you know, the, the funds have been transferred directly to the MSMEs. So never before have MSMEs been benefited so much despite having a COVID uh, please, uh, you know, be uh, reminded of that, of the pandemic times, the pandemic times, the Atmanirbhar package, the 20,000 crore package with uh, which uh, Nirmala Sitharamanji had announced. And most of it was for the MSMEs, for their working capital issues and for all the liquidity uh, crunches that they had during the pandemic. And all of them have risen above and we had a V-shaped recovery post-pandemic. No one can deny that. So I think uh, these are all, you know, small, uh, uh, you know, naysayers and we have to just ignore it because the larger picture is there for the globe to see, for the country to see is what I would say. Jyotha Basu, uh, you know, as, as far as the BJP's poll pitch is concerned, uh, how much of an indication have we got from what PM Modi uh, spoke about today in Bulanshir? Well, uh, you see, today actually officially the BJP <coughs> launched its campaign. And uh, from now on, it's right up to, I think, until the time the, the election results will come out. And obviously, you see, when we are looking at what the Prime Minister has been talking about, he's going to talk about, he has been talking about, and he will continue to talk about the accomplishments of his government, his schemes, and, and he's very focused when it comes to industrialization. And uh, the, the other, apart from that, um, the Russian thing that is very, very popular among the people. Uh, then apart from that, I think the economic measures that he has been taken. So you see, I mean, in a way, what he has been speaking about all through, he is now going to, and it's all about Modi ki guarantee. So that is something I think the BJP will be uh, talking about. And we have seen today, also, they have asked people to share their feedback in terms of what they want to see in the BJP's manifesto. 
Now, crowdsourcing of that, that I think that is a very interesting way of approaching at the issues, because when this gentleman is talking about you know local level issues like that, but first of all when we are looking at local issues and we are looking at national issues, one has to remember that people often do not, often people vote uh, differently in the, at the assembly level and at the uh, Lok Sabha elections, but because in issues like say for example, sugar cane or shut factories and all they are basically uh, primarily related to local governance. And yes, Mr. Yogi has a lot to uh, answer about that, but on the whole I think I do not think at the national level people will be both I mean people will be talking about of course, people will be talking about micro level issues. But the thing is that I, I think a l much larger picture will be coming into uh, the forefront coming to the forefront and I think that is what Mr. Modi is also highlighting the development what he has talked about Sapka Saath, Sapka Vikas in the last 10 years that he has tried to and there are so many schemes when you are looking at the poverty alleviation schemes when it comes to Beti Bachao, Beti Padao. I think the latest has been uh, that Har uh, Ghar Jal. Uh, Nal Se Jal that, that campaign. So, so, so many of these campaigns that are there I think the Prime Minister will be going uh, to his rallies with all this and these are and I am certain that is what the BJPP the workers will also have to do or they are doing that they are going to go and tell the people about the schemes of the Prime Minister that have been kind of implemented about their achievements. So, so, so it is if you ask me it is pretty uh, cut out about which uh, way the campaign should be headed. All right, let me uh, take that across uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, Himanshu Bhatt uh, once again uh, on Himanshu Bhatt, how crucial and important Uttar Pradesh also once again is going to be for of course BJP but also for the opposition. As the saying goes, whoever wins UP comes to Delhi, the road to Delhi is run and rife through Uttar Pradesh. Yes, it is very, very important. And uh, you should not forget the fact and look at the history of last three elections. BJP has been doing wonderfully well, but this time the slogan is Abki, Abki Bar, Charso Ke Bar, pa, or, and 400 plus seats they are talking about. Now, this 400 plus, plus seats when they aspire to get, just imagine that if unless BJP gets, unless this party in the rule gets, more than 72 to 75 seats in Uttar Pradesh, that 400 plus is going to be a dream. And they are a short of that. And that's why, you know, in the first time, first time I said, you know, Uttar, Uttar Pradesh and the Western UP is going to be the key. Because that's where they had lost almost half the seats in 2019. Now, these are the seats which are going to be very, very difficult to beat. And that's why they have started earliest at that place, where on this side, this time, you know, you cannot discount the fact of Ram Bhav. You cannot discount that fact that Ram Mandir's creation has given an immense benefit to the BJP. But that's all right. But along with that, when the development plank is added, then it becomes a vital, you know, winning combination. And that is what is likely to happen in coming two year, coming two three months. We'll witness as the days progress. What is happening here right now is you know everybody is thinking on their life. Congress thinks that Rahul Baba's yatra is going to take that naya part. That's what they seem to think because they are so adamant in doing so. But in Western UP, if I tell you very frankly. That Yatra, the entire route of Yatra has more than 115 seats. And how, how many does Congress have? Practically, I am telling you the facts, just 14 seats in that entire route of Yatra. Now, how are they going to convert these Western UP seats? I don't know. Similarly, when you talk of Samajwadi Party, they are in a little better condition, being a local party. But here, I must tell you a fact. I, I know a little bit about that region and I know a little bit about that one district, one product scheme is doing wonders. It has started doing wonders in entire UP. If you see UP Investor Summit, yeah, people will say MOUs may be so much, this, that, 
how much does it realize but then when an investor summit take place you have to wait for 3 to 5 years for things to materialize because we witnessed that in 2003 from 2002 3 onwards in gujarat so up this time it was the first one where more than you know immense number of uh, people came down it has come into the world's map from bimaru state to the second biggest uh, or the third biggest fourth biggest economy in the country is not a mean achievement my friend and when you talk of a population which is bigger than pakistan and a part of western up is as good as a state in such a case when the basic infrastructural development takes place it creates a lots and lots of opportunities directly and indirectly of an employment and put that along with all the government scheme central government schemes of nal se jal free housing then ujwala scheme toilet scheme everything and you had that you know it shows our figures show india's figures show the 13% of the people have been brought up above the extreme poverty line and maximum of them a major chunk of that happens to be from western up and some of the tribal states so what i am forcing right now is this is going to be a thrust of this government that they will bamboozle opposition this time and this is going to happen i can foresee that and that's why you know ram is not fire it is energy see it's very significant let's not take everything into the you know congested mind of ram means only ram and religious no okay we are talking about fire and energy look you the, saw that the bjp wants to put the path of the nation to ram rajya what is wrong in this abhimanyu tyagi is what the bjp is asking imanshu bhat also mentioning the same uh, and uh, it seems that it, it's a balance of course between that focus on ram rajya and the ram temple uh, you know inauguration that we've seen a few days ago but also on the development plank that pm modi has always tried to speak about udeji i am just asking that farmers are asking for their money and madam here is saying that it is just a local issue 6000 crores of money is spending on state government and on, on sugar mill against i am saying that they are but saab says that about the one district one one product i am saying that bareilly brass industry banaras silk industry lucknow chicken in, uh, dress industry saranpur wooden industry agra kanpur leather work industry aligarh tala industry all are shut closed these days msme industry government itself is in parliament around 30000 msme industry are shut down so where is employment agni veer here in western uttar pradesh basically i am from western uttar pradesh and even i belong to the village here we see that the in every village we have 20 to 30 youths which are in army paramilitary force but now they have stress because they don't have future they don't have permanent employment in future i am asking from bjp spokesperson that bjp itself promised us 2 crore job per year where is our job where is you job they said they will double the agriculture income but they are not giving msp even on potato they are not giving msp on wheat and maize and rice so basically what will they promise what will modi ji give this is the, just a jumla modi ji is a prachar mantri he is coming again earlier he was here in 2022 election time now again he is here again in election time for them sir sanchalak mohan bhagwat is greater and bigger than pooja shankaracharya ji yes okay vinita you can of course quickly respond to that uh, local issues matter as well even in a national election says uh, the congress is abhimanyu and he says that uh, you know these local issues are not being addressed by bjp in this uh, talk of ram rajya and vikas 
never denied that local issues are uh, not significant are significant they are, obviously they are significant development starts at the local level and you know right from the na nation to the state to the district to the block we are uh, transferring our subsidies we are uh, you know in ensuring that our programs are implemented and reaching to the last mile beneficiary and never before has has it been proven in, in independent india than it has been in the last 10 years and as far as farmers to uttar pradesh is concerned over 60000 crore have reached the accounts of more than 2.6 crore farmers in uttar pradesh so that's the figure that we're talking about apart from the rise in agricultural income these are you know data which has been proven uh, so it's not uh, it's not the bjp that's saying it's independent experts who have uh, brought up these statistics so there's been a 15% increase in agricultural income there's been 60000 crore that reached that has reached the 2.6 crore farmers through the plethora of schemes that modi ji has brought in for the farmers including kisan credit card the kisan samman nidhi the kind of work that has been done in rural uh, india is as amazing over the last 10 years look at all the programs look at the pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana look at the <coughs> national rural livelihood mission or you know uh, so on and so forth so many gramin vikas yojanas have been implemented on the ground and uh, rural india has benefited the most benefited okay. the most from the government and the 15th finance commission has given so much of money to rural india because uh, you know because rural india is what we see strength in because rural india is what the backbone of this country is so therefore rural india has just as you know the far from being neglected they've been actually given a thrust and uh, because urban india can take care of itself but it's rural india which has been given a thrust under this government so all of this is all false narratives and we never never have been neglected local issues because development for us starts from the grama panchayat that is one of our theories antodya the poverty eradication program is about saturating all villages all grama panchayats with all basic amenities that is the plank of our development that's a plank of our philosophy itself uh you know so integral humanism where every every uh, human being has to be given all the requirements by the government that is the plank on which modi ji is functioning so all therefore right. um, all of these are very okay. very simple. okay i'm i'm running out of time uh, joyta basu last word well the thing is you see i think uh, when we are discussing the bjp versus opposition i think what the congress still has not got is a, it has not got a theme you know it is okay to talk about it has not got a central plank on which it can find the election on talking about bharat ya nay yatra and all it's fine but then uh it does not really have any resonance on the ground nothing and the thing is you see i just saw a video where uh, rahul gandhi has gone to manipur and what were they singing uh surrounding him all over everybody that uh, raghupati raghava raja ram okay so 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 you know he was sitting there quietly and that is the mood on the ground so you see those are of course emotional uh, moments and but uh, uh, coupled with that the, all the schemes that the prime minister has and he he is a huge i mean he himself is the biggest vote getter that i think the world has right now okay i mean people go and vote for the lamp post in his name so i i think uh, right now definitely they are on uh, the driver's seat but uh, let us see you know indian politics nobody can predict for certain and right now i think what two months at least are left before we go to the elections or two or three months so we are not predicting anything but right now it seems that the bjp has an upper hand all right uh, well uh, my thanks to all of our guests for joining us on this discussion for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon